All right. This is probably going to be a little grainy because I'm inside and it's dark outside. But uh, this is a knife that I've I've done and it's it's finished. The blade finish is done. I forgot to put a stamp on the blade, so you can see here I cut myself a stencil. I'm gonna try. Uh, uh, I'm gonna try electro. Uh, what do you call it? Electro etching. I'm not sure how, if it'll work very well or not. It might end up being blurry if this doesn't lay down good. I might need to put something on there to stick it down. But uh, anyway, the uh, the principle is if it works, I have. A, uh, I have a sponge here that has salt water soaked in it. I cut my stencil out of This is an old oatmeal uh, container lid. I tried a couple different kinds of stencils. I used the, the regular Mora Classic knife for my uh, stencil cutting. Um, I took about a teaspoon of salt water and mixed it with a solo cup full of, I mean a teaspoon of salt, mixed it with a solo cup of water. I've got this taped off so that hopefully it can't get down in there. This is a uh, an 18 volt uh, laptop power supply that I got an alligator clip for the negative lead and a uh, and uh, just a wire for the positive lead. And I'm hoping that uh, see if I can get this right. I think I got it backwards here. I usually have the Switch this around. Yeah. I couldn't find a real good uh, explanation on which side the positive and negative go to when you're etching because most people are using etching machines. But I'm going to assume that it works in the. Uh, let's see. I'm going to guess that it's similar to. Like a reverse electrolysis, but uh, anyway, all I'm gonna do is clip this this lead here, and I'm gonna. This is off, by the way. I haven't got it hooked up yet. If it doesn't work the way I want it, I might reverse the leads and see if it does better the other way. This is just a regular, like a cooking fork. And I'm gonna take the uh, the damp sponge, put it right there. So I'm gonna plug it in first and then see what it does. Oh, hit that, hit that leg, leg of that tripod. Should be able to see it or hear it. Might not have a good enough connection through there. Might have to try a smaller sponge. I have to leave it mostly wet. No, I can hear it now. You can hear it sizzling. It's not going to shock me because, man, I keep hitting that stupid that tripod. Yeah, you can hear it sizzling. It smells like frying. I mean, it sounds like frying bacon. If it smelled like frying bacon, it'd be pretty neat. Huh. It is doing something. Thinking that I need to have this blade sealed. Let's 
Sealed up better than that, it might not. I might take it off and see what it did and redo it here in a second. I'm going to give it maybe a minute more and see what happens. Like I said, this is real low amperage. It's what I use on my electrolysis tank, my small one. And uh, to knock rust off of things, putting out a little heat. Let's set that to the side. And take that off and see what it did. What it did. I'll turn it this way just a little bit. camera thing down yet so this is the first time I've ever tried this I'm not sure if it works I mean if it'll work like this or if I got it wrong or what This uh, knife blade is razor sharp. I mean, scary razor sharp. That's odd. I got spots on the back where it was shot, where it was corroding. Oh, it was definitely working. Didn't have enough seal though. I need to do something to seal it better. Fuzzy. Um, so you can see that if it focuses on it. See it's fuzzy. This is my logo. Just carved it out, the stencil, and it's fuzzy where it was trying to etch it. So how can I fix that? You could put some kind of cement on it. I wish I had some double-sided tape. They'd probably work real well. Um, I think I'm just going to... something to stick around it keep the water from getting anywhere else I'm trying to just run some tape around it see what it does see if I can get it tighter than it was By the way, it's really difficult to tape anything to a sharp knife. It uh, it cuts tape fairly well. It's, I think that fold that I had at the top here that I just cut off with a knife. I think that was stopping it from being sealed up all the way. Yeah, see that's sitting flat now. I, I think that that'll probably do better. Let me see if I can 
seal this side up so it won't uh, corrode because I can see where it's already tried to corrode the back side. Not a big deal. I can, you can see right there a little black spot where it tried to come through. I'm thinking I can probably take a, uh, I can just take some sandpaper and fix that. just regular scotch tape. I'd probably do better if I had some kind of packing tape or something. This stuff's fairly watertight when it's stuck on. Get stuck on dry. This stuff. All right. And boys need to go to bed. This is sealed up a lot better than it was. I'm going to hook it back up the way it was because it seemed to be working just fine. By the way, that is negative to the... Uh, let's see if I can get it to let go. Negative to the, um, to the blade itself. No, positive to the blade itself. negative to the the probe All right, go ahead. I'm just going to let it sit there and see if it etches it pretty deep. It's not even stressing the power supply at all. The power supply has got a green light on it that blinks when it's being overstressed and it's solid when it's not. And, uh, it doesn't seem to be bothering it at all. It's kind of just an experiment. I, I usually uh, hot stamp my, uh, my maker's mark and stuff, uh, my touch mark. But uh, I did, like I said, I didn't crit, I didn't stamp this one, so I'm doing something a little different. cup of coffee and leave that sitting for a second.
Still sizzling. How long I ought to leave this on here to get a good deep etch? I don't know, I might give it a few more minutes. Uh, like I said, all that I use for this is this is a this is like a scrub pad, one of my wife's old used ones. She was gonna throw away anyway. This is like a steak turning fork that I stuck into it to give it a kind of electrode. These are alligator clamps off of something else that my, my dad does uh, electronics work and these are off of something else that he needed the wire but didn't need the clamps, so I got them. Um, the power supply is an old laptop power supply. Tape is just painter's tape, scotch tape. Uh, the uh, logo was, the stencil was cut out of an old oatmeal lid. And I cut it with a, with a Mora Classic because it's got a fine point on it. And that's uh, one of the better uses I've found for the Mora. It's a good sharp knife, but it's just not my favorite. It's still going. It's bubbling the, the suds out of that. Well, I'm going to pause it there and see what it does. The blade's a little warm. Really don't want to untape this thing, and but you know, got to keep seeing how deep it got. Because right now it's been about four or five minutes, maybe three or four minutes. See, there's another place it corroded when it got it. But I imagine as detailed as you can get with the, except for the fact that it seems like it's got a little bit of a blur to it. Probably just because of the equipment I got. I don't have like professional grade etching equipment. Some of those guys with their etching equipment do some really fantastic looking stuff. So my guess is that the more detailed you were on something and the better it is, the uh, cleaner the lines will be. See that's a that's a stamp. So the stamp's nice and clean and deep. And I was looking to see how good I could get a how clean a stamp I could get just doing the etch. Oh, that was much better. That was much better. I'm gonna, I'm gonna get some sandpaper and clean that up so you can see what it looks like. I should have had that nice and flat to begin with. Some 220 sandpaper. Y'all are supposed to be in bed. Now look at that. You saw it. that was all on camera. I didn't do any of it off camera. And I don't know if it's focusing on it, but you see that stamp? It is slightly bigger than what I cut out in the plastic. But that's a good, I mean it's deep enough I can feel it with my fingernail. It's, it's pretty deep. It's not very clean, but it's pretty deep. I imagine it could be better. But uh, I, I'm pretty satisfied with that. That that did real well, it, and it blackened down in it, almost as if it was a stamp. I did. I need. I will say this: you need to cover your blade up because this was perfectly smooth, and it's got a little bit of a place where it engraved down there. And on the back, I've got a couple of places where it got through between the tape. I'm going to cover that blade up. Yep, i got an engraved line right there. That is amazing. It is a sharp cut.